Hello again. Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? One o'clock. Pretty close. Good lunch time. No one says that. Uh, welcome to another episode of Curb TV. My name's Ollie, and I'll be your host today as Jack is going to be doing some cooking today. Because this week we're doing lockdown lunches. All week we'll be cooking a dish by our traders. These might not be the dishes that you, you normally have on the market, but we've tailored these so you can pick up the ingredients from the supermarket. We said to them, can you get it from a Tesco Express? And a lot of them were like, most of it, some of it you can get from a slightly larger supermarket, but even so, you should be able to get these ingredients. If you want to cook along, the ingredients are in the description below, and we've got stuff all week. So you can look at what we've got coming up next this week. You can look at the ingredients, you can go to your Londis, and you can get the stuff. So tomorrow we've got Nick from Cypress Kitchen, and he's going to be cooking some chicken and halloumi pitters, and I'll be making them at the same time to prove that they're actually delicious. Because he'll be like, oh, that's delicious, but you need you need a second opinion. So today, making Trinidadian rotis and chickpea curry, we have got Mariana from Lanyape. Hello, Mariana. Hi, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Um, so do you want to talk me through what do you want me to talk you through what we're making? I'm just gonna say that we've also got Jack live cooking at the same time, cooking the same ingredients, the same dish, and let's see if it comes out the same. Um so Mariana, yeah, please do, please go through the ingredients you've got now. Cool, so we're making a traditional Dalpuri roti that you get in Trinidad. Um, and with it, we're gonna have a um, chickpea and potato curry, a classic Trinidad curry. We'll make all kinds of different curry with it. I know y'all have time, so you can do some pumpkin, you can do some um, spinach, do some curry chicken, whatever. This roti is the star of the show here. And it could be a bit finicky, but I'm gonna take you through sort of tips and tricks to make it good. Should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. So we have a pot here, hot enough with some oil, and uh, we've got about half an onion chopped up, which we're gonna throw in. That's just, that's just your regular white onion. Just get that anywhere. Okay, and then we have about five cloves of garlic chopped up. With curry, the more garlic, the better. And with it as well is um, chopped up scotch bonnet. I've done about a quarter of a scotch yellow so it's kind of the same color as the garlic but um you, it, however hot you like it if you want to put more you can put whatever kind of chili that you want um it's, it's got on it just a real classic sugar and about a quarter give you a nice amount of spice but also if you want to just get the flavors and not so much the spice from the scotch bonnet you can put a whole scotch bonnet um into it once you've got all the water and the chickpeas and everything in there and then you just bubble and that will give you the flavor more than the heat. We're going to throw that in along with about half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. We're going to give them a good mix around and just let a little soften up a bit. Um, Mariana, can I just ask, are you on the Wi-Fi or are you just on your data? What's that? Are you on your Wi-Fi or are you on your data? Because we're, it's, get, it's uh, skipping a little bit. I, okay. Should I try data? Uh, no, well, it seems all right, but I just want to just check that there's no other way you can make it a little bit faster. I can try it on the data. It might be better. Okay, we can try it. Let's see. This is obviously live TV, so things <laughs> things do change. Jack, Jack, please tell us what you've got. Um, well, I'm just... I'm just waiting for my oil to heat up a little bit. Uh, so I've got a couple of cumin seeds in there, just waiting. Just got doing, doing a little check with a piece of onion. It's looking just about there. So I'm probably going to add everything else now. So give me one sec. Let's do this. OK, so onion. Oh, yeah. Some garlic. And I chopped up a couple of chilies. I don't have any scotch bonnet chili, so I just put some spicy chilies that I could find in my fridge. Cool. Okay, Mariana, so, I think that might be worse. <laughs> so let's go back to the Wi-Fi. I'm sorry about that. I was just checking. 
whilst whilst uh, you're doing that, please keep cooking, and Jack will demonstrate what's happening. Yeah. So I put half a teaspoon of cumin seeds with some garlic, ginger. Uh, oh no, no ginger, garlic, half an onion, and some chili. So I'm just gonna let that do its thing. It's on quite hot because my my hobs aren't that great. So I'm just gonna let them push, push, push. I think we're back with Mariana now. If you could just unmute yourself. I've muted you, Jack. Mariana, let's. What have you got? No, it's not working right yet, <laughs> right now. Okay, keep going, Jack. Okay, you can you can see my 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 flippy technique. Oh yeah, it smells so good. I think like a lot of the time when I'm cooking these kind of dishes, I add like loads of spices. Like I just keep going and going and going and going. And I've only added cumin, and oh, this smells so good. I've I've been hankering to cook something like this for a while, because most of the time I cook like. <laughs> Middle East and stuff. So this is quite nice to cook something a little different. Okay, let's let's test Mariana again. Are you back? Mariana, are you back? Can we hear you? You need to unmute yourself if you're there. Okay. Okay, <laughs> right, fine. Let's go back to Jack. Okay, um, I'm not really sure what the next step in this recipe is. But I'm gonna guess that it's to add potatoes because they haven't been cooked yet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, a bit of pepper, and I'm gonna go, I've got a load of potatoes, I'll show you. I've just chopped up and I kept them in the water so that they didn't oxidize. So I'm just gonna quickly drain them. Oh. I think we might have her back. The internet connection is still a bit slow. Mariana, can you hear us? How are we doing? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, I think we're back. We can hear you, but the, the video's skipping right, a bit. But so just keep going. So I, I've also been in this, this hellish situation where I've tried to talk to Jack and then not had the internet working for me at the same time. Um. I can add the potatoes now. I'm not sure if that is the next step. But I'm going to guess that that is because they haven't been cooked yet. So I'm going to do that. Oh my god, this is this is this is a bit. Uh, that's a good bit of ASMR there. This is a bit like a uh, a Bake Off challenge where you're just given the, given the ingredients. And you have to work yeah. out. Re ready, steady, cook. Just figure it out. But so. I've, add, I've added my potatoes. You can see there's cumin seeds all over it. More cumin seeds there. So. Oh no. <laughs> said, Sam said, who votes Jack should put the potatoes in the pan and someone said no. <laughs> well, I've done it, so. No one wants to eat raw potato. So. <laughs> this is <laughs> hilarious. Uh, I have some other spices that Mariana put on her list. So I feel like I'm going to add some now. So I've got some thyme. You can see there. It's not anything else, I promise. It says two sprigs of thyme. So I'm going to go okay. like one teaspoon. Yeah, there we go. Mariana, you're back. Okay, I'm back. We're back. Okay, great. So, can I just okay. catch, before you go, can I just catch you up to yeah. what Jack's done? Jack's put the potatoes in already. Okay, fine. Good. So you put in what have you put in, Jack? You put in the curry I put, powder, the turmeric. No, 
I put the potatoes. Um, I don't have any curry powder. I have some garam masala, so I was going to use that. Okay. And so that, that, that's all I've done. Where you've gone a bit wrong is that you should always cook your curry before you add anything else. There so, we go. <laughs> so, here I've got two and a half tablespoons of madras curry powder. You can, if you don't have madras, use any kind of other curry powder. Um, there's also Caribbean ones or Indian ones. Madras is, for me, the best one. Um, and then we've got the ground jira, which is cumin. And so you can use normal cumin, but the best flavor to get is if you roast your cumin seeds until they're a dark, dark brown color, grind them up or put them in your um, Nutribullet or whatever to get them into a powder. And you get this really dark, beautiful color and it adds so much depth and richness to the food. And okay. it's a real distinct Trinidadian taste. Um, and then we got a bit of turmeric as well to add that nice curry color. So we're gonna throw them all in and turn our heat up a little bit. So, I mean, Jack knows the answer to this, I'm sure, but how did the, how is there like a similar uh, amount, like curry in like Southeast Asia to the Caribbean? How does that work? Was there like a trade route or something? Yeah, so um, basically, uh, the boatloads and boatloads of um, Indians came across to Trinidad. Um, back when sort of slavery was abolished and they needed workers to work on all the fields and that kind of thing. So we had loads of um, Indians came across and brought their spices, brought um, their, all their different flavors and foods and they kind of melted in with um, the more Caribbean style things. So the flavors that we use across the Caribbean, but then also very much Indian flavors. And so it's kind of Trinidadian Indian. It has its own sort of um, vibe. So that's why you, that's why you get the Scotch bonnet put in. Where well, you get the Scotch bonnet, yeah. So um, what we're gonna do is you see the you, you got that bubbling. Add a little bit of water, and then you what you want is for this water to evaporate, and this is helping to cook the curry down. So it's just a little bit of water. Get your fire up, and we're gonna leave that for a bit and let the um, water evaporate, and your curry powder is gonna come kind of clumpy, and that will release all the aromas and everything because. It's up in a, it's in packaging and you want that all to all that flavor to come out. So we're gonna come to our roti. Um, so we've got 300 grams of flour here. This should give you about six rotis. You can see on my pot, I have my tower pan. This is the roti pan that we use. If you don't have one of these, which you probably don't, um, you can use just the biggest um, frying pan that you have, but you need to make sure you're making your balls, your dough balls to go to the size of your frying pan because you don't wanna make them too big. So for me, this will probably make me about six to six that are about 90 to 100 grams each. Um, but we'll get to that anyway. So I've got plain flour here and I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of baking powder and a good pinch of salt. And I'm going to use this, just mix it around. I like to use a claw-like action, but feel free to use whatever, whatever action. You I, I, I use a claw as well. Oh, do you? That's, look that's my turn. Look at Jack's claw. <laughs> very nice, Jack. Okay, so with the dough, this is very vague, but if it's too sticky, if it's too wet, too soft, you're going to have trouble when you're rolling it out because we have to split, we have to fill these bowls with split peas. And when you're rolling it out, if it's too wet, it's going to break apart. The split peas are going to come through and it'll be a disaster. If it's too dry, when you're putting the split peas in, you're not going to be able to bring it together and seal it. So it has to be somewhere in the middle. Is that clear enough? So let's <laughs> add a little bit of water at a time. Come on, this side make it right on it. So add just a little bit and start bringing it together. And is this cold water or hot water? No, you can just use cold water, room temperature water. There's no yeast in here or anything, so you haven't it hasn't got a um rice. So Whilst you're mixing that, I've got a question for you. I did a little bit of yeah. research on uh, your history. My, and, my uh, personal history? Your personal history. And uh, could you tell me what a night out in Cardiff is like? <laughs> um, a night out in Cardiff. I mean, there's a lot of um, a lot of tiny dresses and the high heels and no coats going on. <laughs> but... <laughs> To me, it's true. as a student in Cardiff, that was the best place. It was cheap. There was so many student nights. There was like so many clubs, bars. It was the best. <laughs> I've been on a few. I've been on a few nights out there. 
Yeah, and then there's and, Chippy and, Lane as well, which is where uh, all the um where all the chip shops and kebab shops are. So you just go down Chippy Lanes and just sort it at the end of the night. <laughs> I was get, like, I think at the end of the night, it looks a little bit like what would happen if society crumbled. <laughs> a little bit like that. But, but, but then by the next day, it's back to normal, and this is it, nothing happened. It's an amazing city. Um, so if there's one thing that I hate is cleaning up dough from the counter. So since it's only a little bit amount, a little um, piece of dough, we're going to just keep it in here. You don't need to over knead this. You just want to kind of bring it together and get into a nice kind of soft, smooth dough. So it should be the sort of consistency of like a, what would you say, like a, a putty? What, what, what do you mean a putty? Like what kind of putty? Like a burger putty or a Jamaican no, putty? Like, like putty, like blue tack or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you want it, so you want it nice and soft. So when you put your finger in, it kind of still leaves an imprint. Um, but you don't want it sticky and you definitely don't want it dry. So we're just going to pull that into a bowl, get a bit of damp tissue paper or towel or cling film and just stick that on there. We're going to leave that for five, come back to our curry. You see the way that's all reduced down and we've got a nice paste out of that. Nice. So now Jack is when you want to add your potatoes. Right, Jack, how are you doing? <laughs> Jack's just finished his, uh, his, his dough. He's getting ready to wait. Five minutes for that. Jack, let's see your curry. Let's, let's So I've just added I've just added my potatoes, you know. Just added them <laughs> for the first time. Uh, um, Jack, I'll come back to you because you'll get your, your phone messy by picking it yeah. up. So don't worry, don't worry. So you've added in the potatoes. Added the potatoes, give it a nice mix around, get that all coated. And then I've got about two cans of chickpeas. Um, I had dry chickpeas, so you just soak them overnight and then boil them with a bit of baking soda and they come out nice and soft. So you can throw those in there. And then give it all a good mix. So it's quite a, it's quite a simple curry in that you, you're just using stuff that like you, you've got in a cupboard or you just might oh, like... totally. Yeah, and you can, you know, make it your own. You can add a little bit of masala, you can add... Um, different types of chilies. You can add different spice, um, different um, aromatics. So you can throw some ginger in there. Like make it your own. But this is kind of very simple, basic way to do it. So those potatoes are gonna suck up lots of um, salt. So we're just gonna add a good teaspoon of salt, and then you can add more as you go. And then a little bit of black pepper. Nice bit of chef's larder there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we don't want to fill this up too much. You don't want a watery curry. So you're gonna do it just under the line of the um, where the potatoes are. You wanna see everything kind of still sticking up around there. So just so you see everything kind of sticking up. And then for me, for a little bit of extra flavor, a little bit of extra spice, I'm gonna put a whole scotch bonnet pepper in there. And this, nice. like I said, will re release sort of the really distinct flavors of the scotch bonnet, but not so much spice. So you're gonna turn the heat up and get your lid on and hope that that cooks in 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, no, that's, <laughs> okay. that's, that's so, quite interesting because I think if I was going to be cooking potatoes, I'd submerge them totally because I would want them. I'd think that the top bit wouldn't cook, but does it just yeah. cook? Because it's once you've got the once you've got the lid on and you've got a good boil going, it'll cook because it's um, everything's going to mush down a bit. It'll cook. You all get. Nice. You don't want them watery. Okay. So next, we have our filling for our rotis. So this is quite important, and this is where it can be really finicky. So I said in the ingredients, if you have split peas um, boiled with a bit of turmeric and you want them so that they're soft but and cooked but not mushy because the minute they're mushy, you put them in here and they just turn into a big ball of mush. So you want them so that you can, I have flour all over my hands, you want them so you can just press them down but there's still a slight bite in the middle. So it still has um, texture to it. Got it. So you're going to put these in your food processor and then I've got here... A nice little piece of scotch bonnet, not too much. Throw that in. I've got two little cloves of garlic. And then I've got a good handful of coriander. Um, in Trinidad, you would use uh, something called shadow benny, or if you look in um, Chinese supermarkets, you can get Thai parsley. And it's very similar to coriander, but it's stronger and it's punchier and it's very distinct flavor. It's very Trinidadian flavor. Wow, um, and I've literally never heard of it. 
got that roasted jira, um, roasted cumin seeds. Like I said, if you didn't, if you couldn't be bothered to roast the seeds, that's totally fine. Just use normal cumin. So I'm just gonna put in about a half a teaspoon, and then a pinch of salt. Then we're gonna get our lid on. And then make some noise. So whilst that's doing that and making a lot of noise, let's just go back to Jack and see where he is right now. Jack, hello. Where are you? Um, so I've just, I don't, I, I, I was using a wok, so I had to <laughs> use my other wok to cover it because that's the only thing that's, uh, that's like wide enough, but that's okay. It's doing. My dough is just over here. It's just, it's not earlier. Um, I'll just show you. So there you go. Nice. Um, uh, earlier, Mariana was saying like there's a really fine line between too wet or too dry, which I just discovered. So that was fun. <laughs> um, but it smells really good in my kitchen, and it's quite nice to cook. I haven't cooked like a, a curry in quite a long time, so awesome. it's quite it'll nice. Be it'll be delicious regardless. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Right, so. let's go. Let's go back to Mariana. I think she's paid. Still going. So, have you added anything into that since we've uh, been speaking to Jack, or is that just still everything you had in there? No. So you, you just want to make sure that you keep sort of um, mixing it around. It's this is going to take longer for some people. If your blender isn't particularly strong, you want it. Um. So right now you can see that you have like these big chunks of split pea in there. You want to kind of get rid of those. You want it to be more of a powder. So you want like it to be sand. a powder. What's that? Like sand. Like sand, clumpy sand, like wet sand. Yeah. Wet sand. Okay, great. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put that on again. But before I do. We're going to take our dough in the meantime, and you can make your dough balls. So I'm going to make, um, mine are going to be about 90 to 100 grams. So just take them, roll them out. And, but if you've got a frying pan, if it's smaller, you might even want to do them maybe about 60, 70 grams. So that's about a 100 gram bowl, but it's going to get bigger once you um, put your filling in. So, so I, don't, do I don't even own any scales. So I'm looking at that and saying like egg size. Yeah, if you do, mine's a bit bigger than egg size, but I think if you do egg size, that's probably about right. So I'm just going to show you how to make two balls, but keep doing, keep rolling, and we're just going to put this back on. Okay, we'll go back to Jack. Jack, where are you? What have we got? He's he's making the eggs. He's muted. Nice. So a uh, little known, Jack, you're muted, unfortunately. Can't hear you. Okay, he's still going. All right, where are we at? We're just making the balls now. Blend them up there. The chickpeas, uh, split peas. That looks quite sandy. Yeah, it's quite sandy. I still have a couple of little chunks in there, but that's okay. We'll be okay. So, how's, um, Jack, how's, how's your split piece coming on, Jack? Jack, how are you I, I, I couldn't find any, unfortunately. So I'm just going straight roti. The key, the key to the roti. I know, I know, but you know, next time. <laughs> okay. Have you rolled your dough balls into? No. I've got four. You could probably get about six. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I'm just going to give this one more blast. So Jack, you used to work in a in a bread business. I did. And you're and you're a big fan of making bread. I am. This is this is not my most successful attempt though, but that's okay. It happens. We just got just to trying to make just trying to make it round, but it's okay. Let's see what it looks like now. It's, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's all right. I imagine, yeah. I imagine it's, it's okay. quite, it seems like a much more stressful job than I'm going to have tomorrow cooking a chicken and halloumi. It's fun. It's fun. 
yeah. what better place to fail than on live TV, you know? Right. Well, let's get back to Mariana. She's she's got the, okay. the split piece. So we got a really nice sandy texture there. We haven't got big lumps. We can go through that. So that is just about right. So next step, we got our dough balls. It's filling the dough balls. This can be a little bit tricky, um, but I will talk you through. So you get your ball. Hopefully it's nice and soft. And you want to get a, your um, split peas, your ground split peas, a little bowl of flour and a little bowl of um, oil. And so you're going to take your ball and you're just going to press it around and flatten it out. You don't want the middle to get too thin because the split peas are bust through. So you want more of the ends to come through. So you're flattening it out to like about, so you can hold it in your palm like that. And then you're going to sprinkle it generously with some flour. And then you're going to fill it with your split peas. So you can use a tablespoon or something with this. You just want to get it nice and compact and put it in um start off with a small amount um because it, it could be quite if you start off with a lot then it could be quite tricky so try and get it in your hands and you want to take your thumbs and just press it in compress it all into there and what we want to do is bring the sides in and seal it so use your two hands use your thumbs whatever method you are comfortable with and you just want to slowly bring the sides together keep pushing that filling in and bring the sides together. Almost and like you're making a dumpling. Yeah, with, with lots of filling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then just give it a little turn and seal. And hold. Okay, so you have it nice and sealed. Nothing's coming through. Turn it around and add a bit of oil on top. And then you have your... Shall we do it one more time with one other? Yeah. So we got our dough ball. You're going to press it around the sides, flatten it out. So when you're on the stool, how many of these are you making a day? Um, so anywhere between, well, because I do rice as well, it kind of gets split. So I, I'll do between 50 to 70 rotis already rolled. So I take them to the stool like this and then roll them out on the stool. Oh, nice. So we've got that flattened out and then we're going to sprinkle your flour. Nice generous amount of flour. And then you're going to compress those split peas and get it in there. Push so it is down the, with your mm -hmm. is, the, is the idea with this to sort of, you're, once you've made it into a ball, you can then, when you roll it out, you're sort of combined it already. It's like it's meshed together as part of making yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. When it was, so what will happen is you, um, when you cook it, the split peas will still be sort of independent from the, the dough it's not gonna it's not gonna become part of the dough it'll still when you rip open the roti the split peas you'll be able to see them in there so i'll show you when we make them so seal that up turn it around add your oil and then they're ready to cook so with these doughs make make all of them if you're not using them all that's fine Just wrap it in cling film and you can freeze them they freeze weight really well so when you're ready to um, to cook, let me just take them out, let them thaw, and then you can roll them out and cook them as well. So we're going to roll these out, get ready to put them in our tower slash frying pan. So you take your surface and flour it. Nice and messy. Get your dough ball. Get some flour on top. And you want to press it down and sort of distribute those split peas evenly around. And then you're going to take your rolling pin and roll it out. What happens if the dough splits and the, the filling comes out? That's fine. Just, just um, you know, just keep going. It's totally fine. It, it just, it the, dough, the dough just won't rise um, when you're cooking it, but that's no big deal. We've had a so question see... in from uh, Chloe. Uh-huh. She's, uh, she's asking, I think, more generally about your street food business. They want to make, uh, they're making Sri Lankan roti. And in your like opinion, would you pre-make the roti or would you make it on the stand? If you're making what kind of roti? Sri Lankan roti. I know it's a different thing to what you're doing, but do you think that making the roti on the stand is like a, it's like a selling point and it's a bit- uh, Yeah, I think so. I think people really like the theatre of seeing you um, do it and also they're seeing how fresh it is as well when you're making it on there so I think it makes a difference because people then they ask a lot of questions and they know it's not chopped but they know it's handmade and I think people like 
that they like the theatre, they like to know that you've done it from scratch and you know what you're doing. So I'd say definitely, if you can make it easy for yourself to do it on the stall, then I think it's a winner. And okay, it tastes so good. Like, roll out our dough. We've got our hot pan. So we're going to whack him on there. Make sure your ends are nice and thin. So yeah, I've had quite a few chunky bits of the pan of split through, but that's okay. So we're going to get, make sure your heat's nice and high. And then I have my, my dabbler. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so when you see it sort of bubble and start coming through and cooking a little bit, you're going to take him and flip them over. You can rotate it a little bit so you know all the sides are getting cooked. And then you're going to get your oil. I have a little pastry brush. Um, if you don't have a pastry brush, use a bit of kitchen roll and dip it in some oil and just dab it on there. But what you want to do is make sure that there's no um, flour, dry flour happening on there. So one of the things I'm fascinated about is how like loads of different cultures essentially do a similar dish, but with um, with like what they the ingredients they have locally. Like the process you're doing now looks very similar to like making a tortilla or making a crepe or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, it's all they're all crossovers, just with different flavor profiles, different methods. Um, I'm just gonna take the lid off of my can of potatoes so that, oh, look at that, that water can start evaporating. So you want to see how this is rising nicely. Get a nice little rise from there. If you have little holes where the air is coming out, you can just cover them and they'll that'll rise up. So you see that little hole there, cover it, and it starts to rise a little bit. There you go. So you don't want to get it too charred. You just want it so it has a nice little bit of browning once that's resin, it's cooked. And I'm just going to work him there. If you're making lots of them, you can put them in, like, in a cool box and that will steam them and make them really nice and soft. And then so we do one more. So press it out, distribute the split peas. And then roll them up. Should we, uh, should we check on Jack? Let's see how he's doing. How he's doing on. How are we doing, Jack? Nice. So that you're just going with your traditional roti, none of the split peas inside. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you, Jack. You're you're muted at the moment. There we go. I, I wish. Yeah. So it's not. It's bubbling up nicely. So just gonna give it a second. Yeah, it's good. So Jack. Yeah. Um, what you can do is if you're making a plain roti like that, when you put it on the pan, yeah. after you've kind of cooked it, take it off the pan, slip it off the side of the pan onto your open flame, and then the open flame will help to rise it and give it a nice char. And that and that's what we call like a sad roti, it's like a plain roti, um, okay. without any of the fancy filling. I saw a, a great video of uh, Curry on Nonstop making them, and you flip it constantly, so, and then it puffs up into almost like a ball, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, I, I I only have an electric cooker though, so I'm not really oh, sure if I, if that no. will work. That's a shame. <laughs> oh well, well. Let's have a look at your let's have a look at your curry then. So that it's all sort of simmering now. Yeah, than, it's getting a little bit fun. mushy. It's thickening up. That pepper, you want to be careful when you're stirring it because if you bust it, then it will release lots of heat. How many, uh, how many grams were the balls again? What would you say? What was it around? So like for me, mine was about 90 to 100 grams. But I've got a really big pan, so that's for this size roti. If you want to make um, a smaller roti, probably go down to like 70. You might have to experiment a bit with whatever size pan that you have. You get a nice little puff up there. So you can get an angle, you can see how it's puffing up. That looks absolutely amazing. So you get that nice little puffing up. And if your sides are a little bit thick, if your heat hasn't, um, if your heat has to be distributed quite evenly and hot. So if you find your sides haven't cooked, just bring it to the middle like this. And then just press it down and that will help cook your sides. So yeah, there you go. Your rotis are done. 
Have you been uh, have you been making these your whole life basically then? Uh, no, I haven't. I uh, usually <laughs> buy them. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's only when I moved here that I was like, I guess I'm gonna have to cook my own Trinidadian food. And so uh, a lady, a patron um, in Trinidad, taught me how to make gyrotis. Um, because they're quite finicky and they take a bit of practice to get it right. But um, yeah, they're, they're worth it. Okay, so our curry is pretty much ready. You see the potato is nice and cooked, it's thickening up. Um, as it's cooled, it'll thicken up a bit more. You want it to taste it for a bit of salt. Yep, I have enough salt in it and a good bit of spice. <laughs> that's, that's what it is so I'm going to take the scotch bonnet out now because I don't want it to bust. I, I, believe it, I, I believe it's traditional to have a little bite of the scotch bonnet before you put it in the bin. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see, I want everyone to see me cry. Okay, so once you take that off, if you let it sit for a bit, it'll thicken up, but we don't have time for that. So I'm gonna show you. If you want to wrap your roti, this is how you do it. So you get your roti, it's nice and soft. You maybe you want to put the char bit on the outside just because it looks prettier. And then we're gonna get a couple of scoops of your Shannon potato. So this is where if you have chicken, if you have um, a bit of pumpkin, if you have a bit of spinach, you want to put all that in there. I'm going to just mush up a bit of these potatoes to help thicken it up. So on your stool, when you're doing the lunchtime markets, what do you serve usually? You serve this as well as... Yeah, so this, come, basically chickpea and potatoes come with everything. And then um, we'll do curry chicken, curry beef, um, curry mango, spinach, pumpkin. Um, all of that. And so I'm digging around my, I have scotch bonnet sauce, which I make. This is a pineapple scotch bonnet sauce because it isn't hot enough. And um, oh, I, what I didn't do. Last thing, when you're still cooking it, add some more of that gyro because that adds lovely color, it adds depth, and you can really taste it at the end, that fresh gyro. Sorry, forgot to add that. So that, <laughs> anyway. And um, also, <laughs> got a lot of stuff here. Add some fresh herbs at the end as well to freshen it up. So I'm going to use the rest of that coriander. Throw that in. I've got some um, chopped up uh, spring onions or scallion as we call them. Throw them in. I'll just mix them around and cook it for another couple of minutes. And all of that fresh herbs will really come out. You'll really taste the kind of freshness of it. So, all right. So this roti isn't going to have all that, but anyway. Throw your chickpeas in there, throw a bit of hot sauce, throw some chutney in. If you want a bit of crunch, you can put some cabbage or whatever, um, but you know, it's not particularly traditional. I would usually have a little bit of pumpkin or spinach in there as well, or some chickpeas. And then you're just gonna fold it over, uh, like a little present. And then there you go, have a roti, easy. That looks, that looks absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna eat it. <laughs> Yeah, can, we see, so, can we see how Jack's doing? Let's see where he's at. Jack, how are you? Oh, oh lovely. That's a Very job. nice. It's Looking more like good. a naan bread or a flatbread rather yeah. than a roti, but that's okay. It's still going to be delicious. And delicious. But my curry, I just added some, uh, some, some coriander in there. Yeah, good. it tastes really good. And I've just got a flatbread that I'm going to turn over. So, oh, that's good. Live turning it. Is that a white pan? That's interesting. Oh, is that a plate in a pan? <laughs> no, it's. It, I don't know why it's white. It, so it's, it, it's from Lidl. Who knows? Hey, I needed a frying pan. <laughs> I bet. Does yeah. Lidl have split peas? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> oh, Tesco has split peas, though. I know from fact Tesco has them. Yeah, you'll be able to get them pretty much anywhere. And any like a lot of the uh, sort of larger news agents or anything like that will have them as well, presumably. Yeah. Um, so there we go. Roti, chickpeas, tower, and mess. Yay! <laughs> Amazing. Thanks so much for doing that. No problem. Um, what are your plans for the rest of the week? next few months um, so we are doing deliveries um i'm teaming up with carrie bay um if you look her up on instagram it's carrie bay uk 
Um, and we are doing just some Caribbean selects. So we're doing roti, we're doing curry goat, we're doing stew oxtail. We have a special every week and we're doing deliveries around South London. So get in touch at Lamy App Food or Caribe UK. And um, yeah, we can deliver to you if you're in South London. And that knows. Um, I'm so good. I'm so gutted. It seems like all the best street food traders live in South London. Swear to that. I'm, I'm up here in Finsley Park pretty much on my own. <laughs> Just, but, but now you know how to make the good Oh, stuff. yeah, I can make it for myself. So you sort it. You sort it. But, so thanks very much for doing that for us today. Thanks for having me. No problem. Let um, me know if you have any questions or anything like that. Yeah, we'll put your details in the description of the video and then people can order from you directly. Cool, thanks very much. Thank we'll you see you on much. the street soon, hopefully. <laughs> Selling food, yeah. <laughs> Selling food, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just to be clear. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mariana. See you soon. See you later. Bye. 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 Right, Jack. We're done. Hey. I've make... still got some dough left. So I'm gonna make a couple more rotis. Nice. And the curry's good. Yeah, curry's really good. It's like the bread's not as flat as I would like it, but it's just not the best. It's not the best, but it's still going to be great. I don't even have a rolling pin anyway, so I don't know how I would have done it. You, you can use wine bottle. Ah, very good. So, so, all, this week, so all this week we're going to be doing uh, cooking demonstrations with some of more of our traders. Tomorrow we've got Nick from Cypress Kitchen cooking chicken and halloumi pitters. You can have just Yum. chicken, you can have just salumi. They'll be absolutely delicious regardless. Um, so please do tune in. If you want to find the recipe uh, for that and the ingredients you need to buy, it'll be in the description of his video, which you'll be able to find somewhere on YouTube. We'll do it. We'll probably post this on Instagram as well. Um, so awesome. Jack, well done. Well done for cooking. Yeah, I tried my best. It's lo looking pretty good and I'm quite hungry now. <laughs> I think what well, I think what you've done is you've you've taken the Trinidadian curry and you've cooked like a nice curry, basically. Yeah. All basically. the Trinidadian elements of the Scotch bonnet and the, the split peas. Yeah. I'm just Let gonna put some steel I'm gonna put some steel band on like music on in the background. Look at look at West India Key and dream. That's oh, yeah. do. Great. Well thanks, Jack. And we'll see Thank you. Tomorrow. you. And we'll see you tomorrow if you want to come and cook uh, Cypress Kitchen's pitters with me. I'll be cooking. It's going to be way easier than what uh, Jack had to do because it's going to be essentially frying some halloumi. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, that was La Niape. You can find all the details um, on the internet. We'll put it in the description. And if you want to support any of our traders, including La Niape, you can go to curbfood.store. And when they're back on the street, selling food you can uh, you can get a voucher to cash it in when you go to the, them at the market so thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock goodbye